everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. Now as always I hope you've had a fantastic week or at least the best week you possibly can given the current circumstances. Um, I had a really busy Friday this week. I always get my date, I'm so confused with what day it is just recently because everything's just so up in the air. I'm really puzzling myself, it's just blah, 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 blah. It's like brain spaghetti. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I have a koi pond in my back garden. When I very first placed it in my garden, there was a slight lean to the right, to the right. And over time, over the past five years that it's been there, it's just progressively gotten worse. And it got to the point where I went in the garden, um, it was actually yesterday, so today's Saturday that I'm recording this. And the wife was like, my wife's always been like, just leave it alone, it's fine, it's fine. Stop tampering with it, just leave it. The pond, that is. And um, on this occasion, she kind of agreed with me. She went, it really is, it's, it's really bad. And it's definitely progressively got worse. So much so that the water level was just driving me insane. So I spent my entire day on the Friday draining out however many liters of water that might be. And then having to take the pond apart to move it to the other end of the garden. It was a disaster. Um, it was just, it, we did it. We did it in great, great success. Wow, 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 very nice. It just took so, so much time. It literally stole the entire day. But I suppose it's a job well done. It's now safely on a more level platform. It's actually on a base for what would have been a shed, I assume. So it looks a lot better. It was just a lot of work and I can't quite move the same today. I've got this really, 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 really. I've got this really weird, like, pain in my back that I can't seem to kind of, like, shake it out. It's just kind of there. Yeah, it's not a nice feeling. It's a heavy pond. It was very heavy. And it was just me and my good lady doing it, too. So, yeah, it was quite the job. So I do hope that you all had a good week. This week's video is going to be a little bit controversial. So this video is not going to be for everybody. But I do get a lot of questions asking how I prepare my worms. What do you do? Do you just chuck them in? Do you feed by hand? How do you prepare them? What happens if the worms are too big? So today's video is going to be all about earthworms. Now, of course, you can feed feeding pallets. Uh, feeding pallets are great. Um, and weirdly enough, they smell really nice as well. I'm going to sniff it. I'm going to sniff it right in front of you. They just smell like little bits of meat. They just smell really nice. I know it's disgusting because it's all broken down bugs and everything else. I'm, I dread to think what's inside of them. Feeding pellets are great, but they're not really suitable for an everyday part of an Axlothal's diet. I feed many live foods and then these on the rarest of occasions. I kind of make them work for this because obviously I hand feed. So when I pop these in the tank, I let them go looking for them themselves. So they are good to keep that stimulated as well. But yeah, people always ask how I prepare my worms and how I do it. Now I'm not gonna show you the graphic side of it because obviously it involves chopping up earthworms, which not everybody's gonna appreciate. But I'm gonna show you the before process and I'm gonna show you the after. And I'm just gonna talk you through how I do it. And I've been doing this now successfully for many years. And this is how I safely do it from the axolotls. So without further ado, let's get going. Let's get cracking with today's video. Off we go, come on. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you've got the right sort of equipment. I use a rubber chopping board. Yes, it's a hardened rubber. So it cuts a lot more smoothly and doesn't blunt your knife either. And then I have a camping knife. It's actually a hunter's knife. Um, and then obviously you need some worms. Now these worms have been removed directly from my wormery that I keep indoors. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is wash them. So as you can see just off camera right here, I'm using my hose pipe and I'm just blasting them down with some nice cold, cool water inside of a bucket. This will basically make them a little bit easier, not so messy when I'm putting them inside of my tanks and makes preparation a lot easier as well. Some people prefer to kill the worms before um, personally, I don't. That's not to add to the cruelty of this. It's just because my axolotls prefer them when they're moving and then they're live. When you um, prepare an axolotl meal, shall we say, the worms will remain alive for a short time afterward. Now, this basically means that they'll wiggle about and they'll become more ap appealing and more appetizing for your axolotls. So you place the worm down and this is where editing comes in and I will skip over the gruesome stuff. And there you go, there you have it. That is, it might look disgusting to a human, but to an axolotl, that's, that is, that's like the sushi of all sushis. It's, um, it's quite a desirable meal. And as you can see, this little monkey right here is heavily anticipating his breakfast, which is in itself is quite adorable, I'm sure you'll agree. And then it's just a case of evening it out amongst your axolotls. Obviously I have quite a few, so I pop a few pieces in each part of the um, container. 
I give three small pieces per axolotl at this size. These are about seven months of age. And it's still a little bit gruesome, I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit sticky, a little bit oozy. <laughs> but the axolotls do love it. And then if you have a few left and you haven't got quite enough, you can always add some axolotl feeding pellets as well. Give it a little mix around and that will make another wholesome meal. It'll just make the food go a little bit further. And it's as simple as that, and that is a really good meal for your axolotl. Good to go. Again, might be disgusting to some, but to an axolotl that is a great meal. And as you can see, we've got Pixel over here, who is eagerly anticipating her meal. Um, I don't go to her. If you watch this, I'll pop the worm at the top. I'll give her a little wiggle so she knows it's there. And then she'll come up and greet me at the top to come and collect it. Such a good girl. Such a good girl. And then we go over to the golds. We have Marcel here that's currently feeding. The little cheeky chap that I think he is. He's adorable. He is not shy at all. He's always the first to feed. And then we've got the little bit more timid Lolly over here in the corner who's doing great, which is very shy in comparison. And then we'll go over to the boys' corner and we offer them some juicy worms. Who's going to be interested first? Oh, I think it's going to be Buddy. <laughs> Come on, Buddy. Get your wiggle on. Uh, with the boys, I'm still working very hard to kind of train these out, so I do. I have a lot more patience with these guys. I give them that little bit more time to kind of work out what I'm there for. And then who do I see eagerly awaiting the extra worm? Oh yes, if there's ever an extra worm or two, there'll be a certain little lady, or should I say sausage, that will always be there waiting. So I actually get my daughter, um, Elba, Ella, to help me out here, as Pixel eagerly awaits the second serving. <laughs> and I wonder why she's got those curves. <laughs> So Pixel has definitely worked out that Ella is going to be feeding her, so she's got her eyes firmly on the prize. And Ella goes in with the worm, and then gobble, 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 as quick as that. <laughs> it's a job well done. Thumbs up, Pal Pal. And there you have it. That's today's video pretty much in a nutshell. As you can see, there's many different ways of slicing and dicing worms. You've got to remember, axolotls can manage really good sized meals, so you don't have to chop them up if you don't need to. Um, your axolotl will manage a, a substantial size worm, but if you are concerned, if you've got a smaller juvenile axolotl and you are concerned about meal size, you can obviously prep and prepare yourself better with the worms that you have. It's not the nicest thing to do, but it is pretty much essential to keep your axolotls happy and healthy. So it is a bit gross, a little bit messy at times, but it's pretty much crucial. I guess it comes down to being the circle of life. I like to think of it like that, without the monkey throwing the line off the cliff at the end. without that bit. Now, I hope you've all enjoyed this week's video. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the new patrons that I received over the week. I will name them right here. Thank you all so much for being part of my Patreon. It means the absolute world. And I have some really juicy gifts coming as well. Um, I'm, a, I'm a giver, I'm definitely a giver. And I've got loads of ideas, some really neat, um, kind of like perks really to being part of the Patreon. So thank you all so much for joining. Now, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content that I'm producing. Also hit the subscription button and ding the notification bell. I kind of had to pause there because I thought, have I just said that? I've said this bit before, haven't I? I've sort of said that here. Did I just say that here? No, I don't think I did. No, I don't think I did. So, until next time, ta-ta for now. Now it's not the nicest thing to have to do in order to pre prepare for <coughs> It's the aroma. Mmm, so nice. No, never. <laughs>